Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Queen of the Seraphic Order, Queen of Martyrs, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Always loyal to the church. That was the watchword of the Franciscans in England during that terrible persecution that began under King Henry VIII and continued uh, at least for several monarchs after him, under Edward VI and Elizabeth, the queen. King Henry VIII had declared himself, the king of England, head of the church in England, and had declared that all the Christian faithful in the ecclesiastical hierarchy in England would now be subject to him in matters of the faith and matters of the church denying the authority of the Pope, the vicar of Christ on earth, with this immoral and unlawful uh, cessation or breaking away from the one true church, there began in England a violent persecution against those who remained loyal to the Roman Catholic Church and to the Pope. Just a few weeks ago, the church celebrated uh, St. Thomas More, who was the Lord Chancellor of England under King Henry VIII, and who was one of the first victim martyrs of that persecution uh, in 1535 for refusing to bless the unlawful divorce and remarriage of Henry VIII for refusing to deny the authority of Rome. Today, we celebrate two other Franciscan saints. By the way, St. Thomas More was a third order Franciscan. These two other saints that we celebrate by name are St. John Jones and St. John Wall, who died uh, years apart from each other but are celebrated and remembered on this same day. Uh, St. John Jones died in 1598, so 60-something years after St. Thomas More, the persecution was still uh, going strong. He, he had been a secular priest prior to becoming a Franciscan, and as such, had been imprisoned at least two times uh, that we know of. And it was during this la the latter of these two uh, periods of imprisonment that he received his vocation to religious life to the Franciscan way of life and so as soon as he was released he went to the nearby convent in Greenwich and received the habit he was then transferred to France where he completed his formation and made his profession and then before returning to England, he spent several years in Rome at the Araceli Friary, volunteering to go back to England. He was accepted, and before leaving Rome, he received a blessing from the Pope Clement VIII, who recognized him as a true son of Francis and asked him to pray for him and for the church. So St. John went back, First he was in London for a brief period, then went out into the country to minister to the people. After three years of this, he was then again imprisoned and spent two years in prison before being charged with the crimes of having gone overseas and being made a priest by the authority of Rome and for returning again to England. And he responded to the charge that if this be a crime, I must own myself guilty, for I am a priest and I came over to England to gain as many souls as I could for Christ. He was then condemned to be hanged, drawn, and quartered. 
And when he heard the sentence, he fell to his knees thanking God that he had been considered worthy of martyrdom. And so shortly after that, then he was put to death. He prayed there at the gallows before he was hung and asked the crowd to pray for him. And he gave a sign that by then was understood in the underground church. He raised his hands um, so that any priest who might be there hidden in the crowd could give him absolution. After his execution, his body was exposed for several days. That was what they did back then. Uh, but then some devout Catholics secretly removed his remains and buried him. He, St. John Jones, is among 40 martyrs of England that were canonized by Pope Paul VI uh, in 1970. The other Franciscan priest and martyr that we remember today is St. John Wall, who uh, as, a, as a religious was known as Father Joachim of St. Anna. He was born in 1620, so about 20-something years after St. John Jones died. He was, as a young boy, sent off to France where he could continue his studies and where he was eventually ordained. Uh, after several years he became, of being a priest, he became a Franciscan and made his solemn profession in 1652. He was greatly respected and admired by his brethren and was voted to be the vicar of the convent and the master of novices. In 1656, he went back to England, joined the mission there, and edified the people until he was eventually uh, accused again of crimes against England. Uh, he was charged with having said mass and heard confessions and received converts into the church, the, the Roman Catholic Church. And for this, he was first imprisoned and then sentenced to death. Before he died, one of his brethren had a chance to uh, speak with him to hear his confession and give him absolution and reported that uh, in prison he was a light for the others and that even his Protestant captors admired him greatly. And Father Joachim of St. Anna, or Father John Wall as he was known, they had to use secret names back then um, when they were out in public. He was canonized, uh, beatified, along with 134 other companions and then canonized in 1970. We see that not only is it important and necessary to profess one's faith in Jesus Christ and fidelity to him, but also to the church, which is uh, the body of Christ and which has a visible head upon earth, uh, who is the Pope, and that the unity of the church is also one of the, uh, one of the doctrines that we have to believe and uphold, even to the point of, of martyrdom and St. John Jones and St. John Wall and hundreds of others, as we heard, we heard, even though their names we may not uh, celebrate individually, they gave their lives in testimony to the true faith, which includes the understanding that there is only one church, there is only one head on earth who is the Pope, and that when we go outside the church, we go outside the will of God and we lose grace. We don't have, outside of the church, there aren't the sacraments of the Eucharist or confession. And these are 
necessary means to our salvation. And so these brave and faithful religious priests, Franciscans, prefer death rather than to deny this truth. And so they remained a sign of contradiction by which others could recognize the truth and the love that they had for Jesus Christ for whom they shed their blood. We pray through their intercession and through the intercession of the Queen of the Seraphic Order, the Blessed Virgin Mary, for the same grace to believe and to profess our faith even unto death if necessary so that we may save our own souls and be instruments of salvation for others. Praise be Jesus and Mary.